We're entering the Hattakulkine National Park from the old Calder Highway, which is just off the, well, current Calder Highway. First up, the Warrapal Lookout. Trees, trees and a lot of trees. We're heading for the campsite at Lake Hatter. This one's a paid campsite, but it's well worth it as it's very nicely maintained and right on the edge of the lake. This is the larger of the two with a second campsite available at Lake Mournpool. Tomorrow we're going to have a look around the park, head down to Oyun to get supplies and fuel, then travel across via Underbull again and visit the Big Desert State Forest. But first, I mean, that lake looks pretty tempting. Yeah, it's not nearly hot enough for it to be nice in a lake this cold. Nah, forget the lake, let's get dinner going. That one. Ah. Of course, I do kind of hope that water doesn't come up any further. You can tell from the high water marks on the trees that it has been in the past. Don't think the 7100 has one. Ah, uh, you're heading back now. Okay, I don't know where you are. Something's beyond this point, maybe you tell me. You know, it's kind of amazing the contrast between Murray Sunset and here. This is literally just across the road from Murray Sunset. And here we've got a lake full of liquid water, a uh, lake where it's not exactly invited. Water levels risen a bit since yesterday. Given the size of that branch, which came off the tree still green with leaves and all, it's a pretty good idea never to hang around under river red gum trees. <laughs> so it's a free text field that the sound card can be named whatever it likes and the manufacturers of both have chosen to name it codec and device. Yeah, that makes things really unambiguous. So we headed out to drive a lap of the park, then head on to Oyun. But first we checked out the Lake Monpool campsite. It was good, but I think we made the right choice with Lake Hatter. We crossed the kangaroo proof fence, built to keep kangaroos from eating all the foliage in the more fragile ecosystem around the lakes, a major factor which was derailing the revegetation attempts. The Chalker Creek crossing was pretty shallow, no problems there. The bottom, however, was quite eroded and rough. We took a look at the camping options along the river, and it certainly confirmed our earlier suspicions that a lot of the people would be found there. You know what this reminds me of? What? Oh. I guess it reminds me really deeply of Murray River. Now to continue on with our theme of uh, skirting along another state's border, uh, that is the Murray River, and the entire river and the other side of the river is New South Wales. The pumping station located here is pumping water from the Murray River into the lakes, in an effort to restore the natural flow patterns into the wetlands that were present prior to the lock system being placed on the Murray River. Dip lock check. Lock the dead. No, do not lock. All right, fuel filled, supplies stocked up, rubbish disposed of. So it's onwards to Big Desert for the next part of the adventure. So 
Rather than taking the Murray Vale to Neil Road, the main road through Big Desert State Forest, we decided to turn off early and cut through the middle of the forested part. Which of course, found us more sand. If you love sand driving, then this is certainly the place for you. The Big Desert State Forest is sandwiched between the Big Desert Wilderness Area and Whipperfield National Park. The Big Desert Wilderness Area is the oldest declared wilderness area in Victoria and is left completely untouched. No tracks, no campsites, no facilities, not even walking track. We're headed for Big Billy Bore, a borehole in the State Forest which was installed in the 1800s for stockmen to water their stock as they drove them from Nil Station down to Cow Plains. and after a lot of sand driving we reached the Big Billy Bore. The water there is drinkable, but that's not recommended. Unlike the untreated rainwater, filtering it will not remove all the dissolved minerals, which will probably result in it not tasting particularly good. Okay, after some judicious part swapping, I think the coil has died on this one. Further workbench testing revealed that this was indeed the case, but now it's time to make some lunch. Alright, when I checked on the drawing there was no cars for fucking miles. Okay. That being um, said, I didn't see the orange one, but I wasn't looking at the cameras. We continued south until we got to the lookout, a very steep sand track up a hill, steeper even than the infamous lookout dune in Whipperfield National Park. Even 22 psi was too much, so we lowered our tyre pressure down to 16. The most painful part of this track is the momentum removing right turn, combined with the deepest sand being at that point as that's where everyone else had experienced the most wheel spin. So we gave it another go, this time with a bit more momentum. The roughness of the track does limit how fast you could go. So it was Max Track's time. They say, as a rule of thumb, that if you can walk up it, you can drive up it. But I could barely walk up it. Alright. Struggle. Unfortunately, we overlooked re-enabling traction control while stuck. No, that's mostly wheel spin. With traction control re-enabled, the vehicle climbed the hill just fine. The other lesson we learned was that I should have taken the time to add the leashes, resulting in us having to perform an archaeological dig to retrieve them from where they ended up deeply buried in the soft sand. So now it was just time to descend back down again. The moral of the story, in sand, traction control off while you're still moving, but on again as soon as you get stuck. The descent, somewhat surprisingly, went without a hitch. Tires were pumped back up to 22 psi and we were well on our way. And then we headed for Milmid Rock Track to cross through Whipperfield National Park.
track conditions here were terrible. This track made the border track look smooth. Some bits of it were smooth, and things would get better for a bit, but then they'd get much worse shortly after, and there were many kilometres of this. So this is it, the famous Milmed Rock. Famous for what? I really don't know. And I'm also not sure why you'd sign a used mask and put it in the visitor book box. Now, where's that hand sanitizer? The section of track through Round Swamp was comparatively pretty good, but it really didn't last. We could have camped here, but there were others here and we just didn't like the look of the place. So we decided to press on. And then there's always that odd washout in the sand that just turns into a deep valley. That was the worst of them by far. Um. Driving in the golden hour gets you pretty good footage, but it's a clear warning sign you're going to end up setting up camp in the darkness. But we pressed on. Towards the other end of things though, the terrain got a fair bit more varied. Some parts were pretty good, but it wasn't long until we just had more sand again. <laughs> the light was steadily fading. Would we get there before dark? We arrived at Western Beach Campground on Albuquerque Lake. Hey, whatever the hell this is, it will just have to do. And whatever the hell that is, it'll just have to do as well. Join us next time where we drive across the lake, see the main part of Whipperfield, visit the world's largest tractor, and go camping on the Murray.